Every year, uh, we give out a President's Choice Award. And basically, it's Greg's decision. This year, the President's Choice Award goes to Denny Long. Mr. Long's resume takes several pages. If I read them all, we'd have to order breakfast today. Just a few highlights. Denny began his career as an office boy at Anheuser-Busch and rose through the ranks of the world's largest brewery to eventually become president and CEO of all of AB's global operations. His legacy at AB is historic. He is also in the St. Louis Soccer Hall of Fame because he's a really good player. He's in the St. Louis University Hall of Fame. He was awarded the U.S. Secretary of Defense Medal for Outstanding Public Service, the highest award that the Secretary of Defense can give to a civilian. He was the Irish American of the Year, the Man of the Year in the World Mercy Fund in Dublin, Ireland, the United States Soccer Hall of Fame. Danny's an Air Force veteran. Well, you get the idea, but we're honoring him tonight for what he's meant to soccer in this city. He initiated AB's sponsorship of the World Cup. He led AB's support of the financially struggling U.S. Soccer Federation. And here in St. Louis, there's a lasting tribute to Danny Long along Interstate 44 in St. Louis County. At AB, he spearheaded the construction of the St. Louis Soccer Park, the first soccer-specific facility in the United States, which would go on to serve as the host of international and professional college masses, and, of course, youth soccer. Hundreds and thousands of boys and girls have had the opportunity to play on the pitches at the soccer park. I can't imagine where soccer in the United States and in St. Louis would be without Denny Long, the man we honor tonight with the President's Choice Award. Please welcome Denny Long. Interviewing Danny Long is a guy in St. Louis we call Mr. Soccer. That's Bill McDermott. Danny, how are you? Fine, fine, Bill. Let's get this right. You start in 1953, age 17, office boy, ran the elevator. Right. Went to Washington U, night classes while you're working at Anheuser Bush. Retire in 1987, you were the president, chief operating officer. Uh, the visible entity of Anheuser-Busch, if Horatio Alger had a story, this was it. <laughs> Thank you. What a ride. You, you missed the excitement, the daily buzz? I was lucky, just lucky. The right place at the right time. Do I miss it? Yes. When you were initially involved with the brewery and all its overall advertising, you still had to sell beer at Anheuser Busch, and I think August reminded you of that on a fairly frequent basis. Uh, he reminded me of a lot of things on a fairly <laughs> frequent basis. But if you read the papers on a daily basis, it seems that the brewing industry has changed almost on a daily basis. It surely has. Do you still follow it closely at all? As closely as I can, not as closely as as I would like to. Um, it's almost as if someone from out of our country has come in and taken over our products. <laughs> I don't mean to correct one of our inductees, but it's not almost. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ron mentioned the soccer park. Soccer park opens in the early 1980s, 1982 to be exact. Uh, AB <clears throat> takes over in 1985. Anheuser-Busch, uh, due in large part to your involvement, was a global sponsor for the international sport, the World Cup in particular, starting in 19. 86 with the Mexican World Cup, Joe Havalange, the then president of FIFA, comes to the St. Louis Soccer Park with the overall FIFA contingent. You take it from there as to what transpired. Well, Joe Havalange and Sip Blatter, who is now in trouble, um, came over, not because, he's not in trouble because he came over here. He's in trouble because he did something since then. Um, but they came here to finally put the nail in the idea that they were going to have the World Cup here in the United States. And uh, just to, to make it easy and quick, Havilland said to me, any company who would build something like this for its community, for soccer, deserves the World Cup. And he said, this is the final answer. So we did something not for the World Cup, but we did something for St. Louis. And I want to say one other thing. The unions did much of the work free, and that was uh, one of the finest things that ever happened to St. Louis, and indicative of the type of people that we have here. What convinced you that sports, and in particular the sport of soccer, uh, the World Cup in particular, and Anheuser-Busch selling beer, were due to be good partners? 
Well, it was a, a practically speaking, um, it was the coup to have control of soccer advertising all over the world, and that's what we eventually ended up with. Um, nothing, no sport touches soccer. As an example, for the World Cup in 19, uh, the, um, the year that we had it, um, there were five billion watchers, and I pointed that out to someone on the board one day, and he said, but there were only three million people and Danny Flynn, whom you know very well, behind me coughed out a, a double viewing, thank God, because I would have made a fool of myself. But I've done that before. <laughs> the soccer park has been an integral part of the success of soccer here in St. Louis, uh, not just for countless amateur teams, uh, but in particular, and most especially, for the World Cup in 1990. Uh, for all intents and purposes, there were no soccer-specific stadiums in 1989, so the soccer park became the home venue for the United States national team, qualifying for the 1990 World Cup, their first appearance in 50 years. Yes. You have to be tremendously proud of that and many other things that have transpired at the park. Yeah, so many things. Uh, the women uh, playing there, so many things that have happened that rolled from just a local event to an international event. Everyone knew of the St. Louis Soccer Park. Everyone knew of the interest in soccer in St. Louis. And if we could do it here in St. Louis, they can do it across the world. And we did it. So the soccer park was the catalyst. As a follow-up to that, uh, the soccer field, the main field is named Denny Long Field at Worldwide Technology Soccer Park where St. Louis FC, a team in USL now plays. And much is made about USL, NASL, and potentially MLS in St. Louis. So I ask you, is St. Louis ready for an MLS franchise? I think so. I think that uh, the, the problem we're going to have is we don't have the dynamics that we had when we brought football teams and hockey teams, etc. Uh, the city is not a singular driving entity now that will raise the money, and the money is as high as it, any other sport. Uh, to come into the soccer world. So I, I don't think we're ready in that sense. I think we will be, and I think it'll come fairly shortly. I don't think it will be this year. Are there people interested in getting involved? Yes, there are at least two groups that I know of, but it won't happen this year in my opinion. The target ideally is for a team in St. Louis to join with Sacramento and to begin playing in the year 2020, but as Denny references, uh, they have to get on with the decision here fairly soon. Yep. Sam Steakhouse, that is now your home venue. It is. And I've been told, I've been told that on occasion at the piano bar, Mr. Long still sings on occasion. I'll be darned, I didn't know that. What, uh, <laughs> is that indeed accurate? Uh, it is, I love it. There's some things you can't give up. And being an office boy is one, the other one singing. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Anglin is here, the uh, president of St. Mary's High School. You have to be extremely proud of what he's been doing to put St. Mary's literally back on the archdiocesan high school map. He has indeed, and he has some plans for us now to help not only, we are the anchor of South County right now, and he has a plan now to take the, the final step, and he's taken six or seven, but the final step to put in a full-size soccer field where St. Joseph's orphanage used to be, and then to make sure that the entire community in that area, which is a, a numerous types of people from all over the world, will work together and be able to use it any time they want. It'll still be St. Mary's. We'll pay for it, but they'll use it. And we're going to urge other people, other uh, high schools, other soccer people, to do that across the St. Louis area. That's one way of bringing St. Louis together. There is no man who has done more to put St. Louis on the national soccer map. Congratulations to Denny Long. Thank you. Yeah, he's, Denny's terrific. He's meant so much to this community. Wait a minute, Denny, you gotta get a picture here. As Jack Buck used to say, you don't know how you look till you have your picture took. 